Sound of that tractor means it's time for us to go to work. This is the Give Us the Dirt podcast powered by Hoopa Grading Company. I am Brandon Lindsay and I am your host today. So you don't have to look far to see that the building business is booming. And to keep up with all that building, you got to have a lot of concrete. Stevenson Ware is a family-owned business that's expanded over the last 70 years to match the growth in the region. Growing from one plant in Great Falls, South Carolina, to over 15 concrete plants, mobile plants, a block plant, a fleet of mixers, dump trucks, and several future undeveloped site locations spread out across North and South Carolina. At almost equal pace, as the business grew, the family did too. The old company started by Grandma and Grandpa Ware in 1948 is now on its third generation of family employees, and two of them are joining us today in the Hoopa Grading Company studio for the Give Us the Dirt podcast. Welcome, Stuart and Kendrick Stevenson. Welcome. How you guys doing? Doing well. Doing good. Thank you guys so much for being here. It didn't take any coercion to get you. To, <laughs> like, I have been working on these guys for months, trying to talk them into coming and doing this. So thank you guys for finally coming and being a part of this. Oh, Thanks for having us. All right. Have you listened to any of the podcast so far? Listen to the first three. Yeah. Jim Thompson, I guess, uh, Brian, and uh, Denton. Oh, yes, cool. Well, this, so you know how we start this thing. We usually start by asking, all right, instead of uh, me introducing you, we want to know how your wife would introduce you to a group <laughs> of strangers. But I'm going to switch it up on you today because uh, I love the fact that we got two brothers in here working yeah. together and everything else. I want to find, if somebody were to ask you, Stuart, tell me about Kendrick. Somebody, and you were around a bunch of people, and they said, <laughs> Tell me, introduce me to Kendrick. What would you say? Oh, uh, man, he's just a good guy. He, I mean, we've grown up together, obviously. Uh, always funny, keeping things moving and just uh, being a, I mean, been a role model to me as well as I hope I have been him. So it's pretty strong. Oh, yeah. What would you say about Stuart? Well, I'd say, I mean, he's my partner in crime here. Um, <laughs> I mean, he just he keeps us focused on the, on the right path and very positive and just a leader. So that's all awesome. glad to follow him. That's so cool that you guys are able to do that. I've got a brother that's pretty close in age to me, about 13 months difference. And uh, we're actually work together at right. Hoopa Grading Company. But growing up, I would have never thought that was possible. <laughs> yeah. And you guys work well together. Oh, it yeah. it works. We do. Yeah. We do. All right. So I want to tell the, kind of the background story on this. Um, Stevenson Ware started when your grandparents – uh, they started a home heating and heating oil business. Is yep. that right? They it was coal, ice, and uh, and then fuel oil. Yes. In 1948. That is correct. Called mm-hmm. Weir Oil. Yep. And your dad was working there. Uh, is that right? Well, dad finished Clemson and came back. Uh, he spent a little time in the fertilizer industry, and yeah. then uh, just came back in 74, 75. Okay. Mm-hmm. But he comes over and he ends up marrying the boss's daughter, daughter, your mom. Well, I think they were married first. They were married first. <laughs> yes. All right, I've got this story yeah. totally jacked up. <laughs> yeah. All right, so they, they're they married. They're running this family business. Yep. Do you guys remember growing up in that? Do you remember what that was like? Because it was much different than what it is today. Okay. Tell me what that was like growing up in. I mean, we, along with our sister, I mean, we were all raised in the sand piles and on playing on – Oil equipment, and I mean, I I remember, uh, or my parents tell stories of about me as far as the in kindergarten or just before kindergarten, I rode the oil truck full time and told them that uh, that I would go to school when the bus to Clemson picked me up. So, <laughs> but uh, so and I, you know, Kendrick had a similar background. We always were we were there. I mean, yeah. they worked. Raised in the sand piles. Yeah. So that was that was the that was the whole. Yep. That was yeah. part of it. You just so was it were you guys predestined to be a part of the business? I mean, was that the plan <laughs> from from birth? Did you know that you were going to be a part of the family business? I don't think so. I mean I I, I knew I didn't. I I thought I didn't want to be a part of it in college and didn't really have a plan otherwise to not be in it, but I think I was maybe somewhat rebelling against what 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 did you want to do uh, you know you you say I don't I really don't know what I wanted to do I think I I knew I wanted to work for myself do something um 
But I, I really didn't have a, a plan. I mean, I think in the back of my head, I knew I was going to go back. I wanted to go back, but I, I didn't want to say that out loud, you know. Yeah. So and then last semester of college, kind of reality hit that, hey, I got to go do something. So came back. And at that point, Stewart had been back for two years, I think. And Definitely. he was doing some pretty exciting things with the company and growing yeah. the ready mix side. And I came back and I, I wanted to help grow that. And, and I started a little concrete pumping business on the side kind of do that on and uh you know the rest is history for me i don't know Stuart. i man just a lot of luck and a lot of good people along the way yeah so, did you man. know that you were going to be a part of the business you know the first three and a half years of my college career i swore i wasn't coming back and then the closer i got done with that i mean i i realized where home was and what i needed was there mm-hmm. was there ever any pressure from mom and dad? Absolutely not. None. No. None. So there was no expectation that hey, yeah. when you finish college, you're coming back. No. Here. I you mean, you guys came to that on your own. Yeah, probably more so the other way. I go out and create your own path, yeah. and uh, just so great. happened that's the path we wanted to create. That's great. Yeah. So talk to me about at some point during this business, there's a shift right from home or heating oil yep. to concrete. Mm-hmm. How did that happen, and and uh, what what drove that? All right, well, and I guess you got to start. 48 was the beginning. 54, he put in, my grandfather put in a concrete plant because the oil drivers didn't have anything to do in the summertime. So they drove concrete trucks summertime, oil trucks wintertime. Uh, so that transitioned all the way through, and, and uh, they were – Big, small, big. I mean, I think he'd gotten up to 15 or 16 mixers at one point in time. And that was when 77 was coming through. They were doing a lot of the uh, cross bridges and stuff, or the the non-interstate paving portions of I-77. And uh, so that was about the time my dad came back and started to buy out the business, so to speak. So that... I mean, he was big in the oil and concrete. And then I guess at that same time, you've got the mills that were leaving Great Falls. and Duke Power was transitioning a lot of their maintenance departments out of Great Falls. And a big portion of the oil business was the lubricant side. So that I think the profit margins started going down as well as higher regulations. And I just eventually, I guess somewhere early 90s, early 90s. transitioned yeah. completely out of the oil industry and and then I, at the same token with the interstate system the the where they facilitated a lot of their moving the the fuel oil and stuff was through service stations and that transition to the interstate and which kind of took away a lot of his outlets to sell mm-hmm. fuel oil or gas and fuel so. that's interesting i had no idea so the, the concrete plant was just to give everybody something to do during the summer months when they couldn't Yep. I think that was the, service oil. That yep. was the initial plan. I think it became more full time, and uh, there was a whole group of guys. I don't know group. I mean, there was three or four producers down that seventy seven corridor that they all worked together. Uh, one was Winsboro Concrete, brother Lyles. Uh, another gentleman was Camden Concrete. I can't remember his name. I can't but the uh, and my grandfather and those group of men were all kind of together and work together in the ready mix industry. And I think, and then in turn, I think most of them bought oil from my grandfather yeah. and my dad. So. Got so. Gotcha. Yeah. So they were running. So he, he said, they say, we're going to, we're committing to concrete. That's where it's at. That's where the future of this business is. We're going in and concrete at that time. It's the one plant there in great falls. It was actually in the, by the seventies or mid seventies, early eighties. It was two plants, two plants at that time in great falls. In okay. Great. And then is that the is that what was in in place when you came back from college? No. <laughs> what did it look like then? The original plant was in place when my parents started to buy it out. They decided, that in order to be able to afford it, they sold the newer plant that they had put in for the interstate system. So. Okay. And uh, I mean, if you talk to my mom and dad, I'm. Kendrick was raised in a bassinet in a batch office, and literally the state would come in and batch. So my mom was a batch person. So, yeah. And then, uh, so I mean, that's a 
one story they tell us anyhow. I don't yeah, quite I don't remember, remember it, but you were actually raised in the batch. That's awesome. what they say. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's I, so cool. All yeah. right, so then comes this next generation, right? Here comes here comes Stuart and Kendrick, and okay. you guys you guys have joined forces. Talk to me about that. When how did how did you guys sit down and, and lay this thing out? Who was the visionary in this thing? And and just how did you guys fall into your respective lanes? Well, I'd say that's where we differ is, I mean, we kind of run from a round table and bounce ideas off of each other. And, yeah. I mean, between me and him, I don't, I don't think either one of us envision one or the other in the league. I mean, it's, yeah. a, it's a joint effort. Yeah. Both of you wanted to grow? Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, we had a vision yeah. from day one. I mean, I think that vision was like five plants around Charlotte area. At the time, we were just in Great Falls, and we had a an idea of moving to Rock Hill where our customer base was, and uh, opportunity came along and seized that, and that was a great, great thing. And then – few years later another opportunity came along and we were able to pick up a plant in Monroe and Richburg and and then just over that I mean I, I, I don't know if we've ever really sat down and said hey this is what we're going to do but we're going to take advantage of the opportunities that come along and uh, I mean I feel like we've created opportunities yeah. don't get me wrong but uh, just really taking advantage of them and I mean, we don't really know what, what we want to do or where we want to go. Let's just – we want to provide a good product, good service, and let that take us where we need to go. We hear a lot of that on, on this podcast from people that uh, that have experienced success and some exponential growth mm-hmm. like you guys have. Yeah. But we hear that the focus was never on growth. Yeah. It was never on growing right. this big business. It was on being the best and doing the best that you could, and the growth came as a result of it. Exactly. I mean, that's what, I mean, we really have just followed our customers. Yeah. I mean, they're, I mean, I couldn't tell you how many times that we'd have to tell a customer, hey, man, I, I can't get there. I mean, yeah. I can't service your job the way you need it serviced. And they're like, look, man, I, I need you. I, I hear what you're saying, but. I need you to I grow with you. me. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, we've done that and we've, we've grown our portfolio off of that. And I mean, some of them have been successful as far as wanting to continue to grow that aspect of the business but uh and some of them we we've seen that hey look we, we don't have that passion for that product and it's not fair to our customers or or anybody else if we don't have that so i want to talk about that because i, I spent a little time trying to get ready for this even though i've known you guys for a long time mm-hmm. i wanted to the business has changed so much even since i was involved yeah. and uh i went to the website and you think of Stevenson Weir and you think concrete. Mm-hmm. You guys are so much more than that now. Oh, yeah. Let, talk to me a little bit about the different parts of the business that you're involved in. Like, uh, I mean, you've got building materials. You've got pumping. What What yeah. else? Well, we, we don't have pumping anymore. Yeah. Oh, right. the pumping's done. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, we recently sold that to uh, Blanchett Concrete Pumping. And okay. Kind of thought that was the way we wanted to go and then just realized we didn't have passion for pumping. So yeah. the... Uh, you know, I mean, we've started a handful of things, gotten out of a handful of things, and gotten into other things. Oh, yeah. All of them which we feel have complemented each other. But, yeah. uh, no, they, they were successful. It was just, at the end of the day, it's not what, what we did. Yeah. And uh, I'd say we did it good. We yeah. just, you get to a point to where, is this something you really want to grow? Is this what you want to pursue? And, and if it's, the passion's not there, then... I think it's time to look at and say, well, maybe it, it will be for someone else. Or maybe that's an opportunity for somebody else. So. You know, and that's one of the parts of being a leader of the company is that uh, you have to decide, all right, are we going down this path or are we going down this? Is this an opportunity or is this a distraction? Yeah. Yep. And I love the concept that you guys talk about that it's not, all right, Stuart said we're going to do this or Kendrick said we're going to do this. It's it's a decision by committee. Oh, uh, right? yeah. And is, I mean, has that committee grown? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, so uh, you've got others outside of just the two of you that get around that conference table and say, hey, this is something we think we need to do. Oh, oh yeah. I mean, one of the weird things about us, I guess, is – Kendrick and I don't have offices. We sit in the conference room yeah. and work from there, and then whoever is in that group comes in. And I mean, it's, it's 
crazy how any day can be an idea or an opportunity that none of us have even considered. Before. Yeah. So. so how do you do that? How do you, how do you weigh whether or not this is an opportunity or this is a distraction? How do you make it? I mean, we, uh, it's usually over a few beers. To be honest <laughs> with you. That always does. <laughs> if, yeah. it, if it sounds good over a few beers and sounds good without them, then that's a pretty good idea. If the idea like. is still good in the morning. <laughs> yeah, it. exactly. Then we're so, going with it. Yeah. I mean, I think we, we were talking about a, a new opportunity or an idea yesterday. And, I mean, we're not afraid to go after it and try it. I mean, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But, hey, it's not a failure. Yep. I mean, we just – Find something else or do something. I mean, with growing, what we, I mean, our core business will always be, I feel like, concrete, yeah. at least in our generation I mean, now. If yeah, if I the agree. next generation wants to do something <laughs> else and they find their way, if, if, that's, a, if that's what they choose. And, We're going to talk about that next generation because I got a feeling they're going to want to do something different. Oh, we'll see. We'll <laughs> see. Uh, probably. So, so let me ask you this. You guys have poured a lot of concrete over the years. Is there mm-hmm. a project that you're really proud of, that you drive by and you say, you know what, we were part of that. That That's something that uh, you I, still get pride. I think all of them are special in some yeah. way or another. And most of the big jobs have a story or a funny something that's come out of it. And then uh, I mean, we talked a little bit about that on the ride up this morning. And, I, I mean, I think probably the most – influential job on us was probably the Ross distribution. Absolutely. And and I mean that was in our eye the job that was either gonna make us or break us. So, yeah. I mean uh you know we had a lot of people saying we couldn't do it and I mean that just fired us up and made us do it. So, yeah. And <laughs> so that was the one yeah, did you know going into that project it was gonna be the one that could make you or break you? I did. Yeah. Yeah. I mean we we definitely did. I mean we put all our eggs in that basket and we were like, look, we're gonna we're going to do this and we're going to do it right and figure it out, figure it out. Yeah. So, I mean, we, uh, I think everything that has come after that is predicated on the Ross job in wow. one aspect or another. And it came at the right time. Yeah. I, th- I would say if anything, we're good at timing. I don't know why, but yeah. we're good at timing. I mean, that was coming out of the recession. So we were able to start buying some equipment coming out of the recession, get, getting employees. And then by the time the Ross job was wrapping up, we were the economy was coming back a little bit. So we, we were able to, to grow again. And um, just really, I mean, the, really the, haven't looked back since. No, yeah. I mean, the, the quality, I mean, we put everything into it to grow because we were just this little residential footing guy that can just pour concrete for a residential driveway or something like that. And then uh, through the recession, I went and I'd really try to, to learn as much on the quality side as I could and really kind of brought into, got into the state work and some light commercial. And I mean, we saw we had to evolve. And I mean, that's yeah. during the downturn. That's what we did. Yeah. I mean, we went into it as a residential concrete customer or provider and came out of it a really – I mean, we dominate the industrial slab business. Now. Yeah, I mean, well, I we feel like we do. Yeah, so. I start. I want to dig it's into one thing that. we do good. I think. I mean, because so. I think that is a fascinating part of your story. I mean, because in some sense, you guys were the underdog. I remember uh-huh, yeah. that project. I <laughs> yeah. remember, and I remember the people saying they can't do that. Yeah, yep. you guys had heard that. Oh yeah. yeah. Does I mean, that fuel you? Oh, oh yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I mean. We'll always have a chip on our shoulder, man. I mean, we're if you ask us, I mean, we still have the mentality of five trucks and a little yeah. concrete plant that can do like twenty yards an hour. I mean, I don't. I mean, I mean that's where we will get most of our drive from. I yeah. think. Is, I mean, we want people to say they can't do that. Yeah. I mean, I, we always want to be chasing number one. I mean, put me in the two slot and I'm good to go. You know. I that mean, is, that's that's where we. I think where it's we, so cool. Yeah, and that you know what, and to think about it, you guys are playing in the sandbox with some big players. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you think oh, about yeah. the people that are in this industry; they are international, vertically integrated companies that yeah. you guys are going toe to toe with, oh, yeah. and in some ways outperforming a lot of times. Yeah, and so, we, we so, do you ever sit back and think about that? That there are board meetings going on in other countries right now, and up on the screen <laughs> is this name that says Stevenson Ware. Uh, and they're trying to figure out how to compete with you. Yeah, very I, humbling. Yeah, I mean, the idea of that the uh, I mean I 
think our success has been based on that we treat all of our, or try, I hope we treat our suppliers like we would, if, like we would want to be treated from our customers and stuff. So, I mean, so you we, treat them like a customer. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I mean, partnerships are the most important part of this business. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, I feel like we have navigated that well for the most part. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure there's been a few bumps. I, <laughs> I remember a partner spe- partnership speech from you in 2012, I believe. Yeah, yeah I didn't know if I was going to make it out of that one. I appreciate you guys letting me walk from uh, that one. Uh, I mean, but we can't be successful if our partners can't be successful. Yeah. And I mean, that's, um, at the end of the day, that's, that's what is just got to be successful, profitable. I mean, that's what drives it. Going forward. I agree with you 100%. We say it all the time. We can't be the best if we don't have the best partners. That's yeah. Right. That's Absolutely. the only way we can do it. And we really do. I mean, from – I mean, we really have some good oh, yeah. good partners in, in this industry. Well, you guys just – you guys made some big waves this year. This was a big uh, yeah. year for you. Absolutely. Talk to me. Talk to me about this merger. Tell me about – tell me about the merger with Southern Concrete. Um, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's start here. Where did that conversation originate? <laughs> so <laughs> we bought a concrete plant off of Craigslist in Hickory, yeah. uh, I guess, what, three or four years ago? Yeah. yeah. And uh, Just off a of whim. It's, it's on the Craigslist ad that someone brought to us, hey, look at this concrete plant. And you can buy a concrete plant on well, Craigslist? Yeah, evidently, yeah. So the, uh, it must have been a weak moment. I'm not <laughs> sure. So. We were talking about, Kendrick and I were flying back from a trip, and we were talking about it and just decided, said, you know what, this doesn't make sense. We probably need to, be, A, either see if we can sell it or go in, dismantle it, and just sell the property. And Didn't fit our footprint yeah. at the time. And then, uh, so we we were discussing that and said, well, you know, maybe we'll reach out to Southern because they had recently bought out Kerr, and it was kind of in Kerr's footprint. And, you know, maybe we can work out something that's beneficial to both parties. And then uh, started playing around with a map and putting dots on maps. And I was like, man, this man, this makes a little more sense than we'd ever really thought it would. And then yeah. ended up getting a meeting with the uh, SCM guys and had a conversation with them. And, man, really just realized we're a lot alike. I mean, family-owned. I mean – there was a lot of synergies there. I hate to use that word. We make fun of it all the time. But uh, <laughs> that truly were there, and we presented our ideas. They presented some ideas, and one thing led to another, and I think it took us, what, 10 months? About well, 10 months, yeah. Which is a relatively short time to pull off something of that yes. size. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, I mean. Yeah, it was pretty neat. I mean, we, I mean, through all the negotiations, uh, it's very easy. Yeah. I mean, we were so like-minded. And we both saw the path forward that, hey, look, this this really makes sense and we can be stronger together than we, we can be apart. So, I mean, I hats off to the Southern and, and their whole organization. I mean, just great people, yeah. great guys. And, and their team that have, has come on with us, I mean, fit in. And we're, man, we're, we're so pretty excited. So the integration's excited. going well. I mean, yeah. Pulling the two companies has not been a challenge. Oh, well, yeah. it's been a challenge. <laughs> There's been challenges. But um, nothing bad though. I mean, just common. That's not the way we used to do this. Or yeah, I mean, simple things that you know we we've learned from them. I hope they've learned from us. Uh, yeah, and we'll continue to do so. And I mean, so far everything seems to be mutually beneficial to both sides. And yeah, I mean, like I said, I mean, it's, we sell a product, we sell a service. That's the best way to do it. And I mean, we've really. Their whole team has come along, and we, like Stewart said it best, I mean, we've learned a lot from them. Hopefully they've learned a little bit from us on how we do things. And, man, uh, you know, I, I think day one I was worried about just getting concrete out the door. <laughs> and then still to this day, that first week is the busiest week we've had. We sold more concrete the first week than we have since. So. Hopefully that will change going forward, but as yeah. of right now, that's still the. Uh, I think we did close to twenty thousand yards at, for, in one week, which was a pretty big major undertaking. Yeah, I think at, so. up to that point, maybe twelve thousand was the biggest that we had ever done. Right, and um, but we did it. Well, you know, everybody came home at the end of the day, and I mean, it was 
a lot of long nights, early mornings, but came home at the end of the day, yeah. just a shower to go back out. Yeah, so that's incredible. Yeah. That's it. So, what's the scope? What's the size of the new merged business? What does that look like? Uh, thirteen active sites, uh, fifteen active plants on those thirteen sites. Uh, we currently have two portables up. Have a third that we have planned to go somewhere. Uh, the, the portable number can always change yeah. a little bit. We're always <laughs> looking for for another opportunity. So. Yeah, and then uh, got a handful of sites that we anticipate to develop. Uh, and what else, what am I leaving out? Um, the, the block plant. Oh, the the block plant. That's yep. new to us. Yep. We're um, trying to navigate. That. Yeah, that's yeah. So it. we're looking forward to learning more about that. That that's going to be a a challenge for us to learn. It's a little a little different than ready mix concrete, but uh, we we've always been in the business of selling block and building material. So now we got to figure out a the production side of it, which I think we're 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 both excited. We we like taking on, hey, can we save a penny here? Do that there, and that's kind of that what that market is all about. So. Well, it makes a lot of sense, and congratulations to you guys and your entire team. That's a yeah. what a great accomplishment there and Thank something you. to be proud of and something I assume took the industry by surprise, right? Did you guys, what was the feedback? Uh, feedback. I mean, I haven't necessarily, necessarily heard anything negative. I would say the, the amazing part is how quiet it stayed. Yeah. Well, that I was mean, amazing. Yeah. The, I to mean, pull that off nowadays in this industry, that's a feat in itself. Oh uh, yeah. I mean, I, I, I mean, I heard little leaks here and there, but I mean, nothing that, Anybody could put yeah. it as concrete, so to speak. And all the leaks were were different, yeah. were not accurate. So, hey, we'll, we'll let them run with that. That's, yeah. That'll be good. So. Well, congratulations. Uh, what, a, what a huge thanks, accomplishment. Man. Thank you. Yeah. And excited to see that continued growth. I, th I think you guys are going to be great together. I think that makes a lot of sense for a lot of reasons. Mm -hmm. So we're going to move into what we call give us the dirt part. It's, we're going to dig a little bit deeper right now. Uh, Oh. It's it's no small thing to run a business for seventy years, mm -hmm. right? What is the secret to to maintaining that culture and to to keeping a business thriving and growing for seventy years? I mean, nobody got nobody handed you a playbook and said, right. "Hey, this is what you do." You guys are writing this as you uh, yeah. as you're going. So, what's been your secret? I mean, I'd say number one is I mean, we had more than two great. Uh, role models, but my dad and my grandfather and of course the way that my mom and his and my and our grandmother, you know, supported him. I mean, it just he always told us just to treat people the way you want to be treated and everything will work out. Yeah. So. I mean that's I think it's really as simple as that. Is I mean, it that simple? Yeah, I, mean, I, I mean do the right thing every I mean Yep. Let's do the right thing, man, and it's uh, and treat people right. Treat people right. Isn't that crazy? At the end that, of the day, that, that's what it's about. Like it, like you can boil it all down to that. If you yeah. treat people right, then they will do everything they can to make you successful. Uh, and I hope so. It sounds like you guys have adopted that from your grandfather and dad, and and that's been a great. Well, yeah, I hope I mean, so. That's what, yeah, awesome. so worked so far. What do you do? <laughs> what do you do for fun? <laughs> Do you, do you, uh, you, uh, you don't work all the time, do you? Uh, I, that's probably one of our downfalls is our hobby is work. Yeah. Uh, I mean, obviously, spend time with kids, and I chase my kids around volleyball. Uh, that seems to be what consumes most of my non-work time. So, What about you, Kendrick? Yeah, so, I mean, really the same. I don't really have any hobbies other outside of work. I mean, just all our friends are in work. Yeah. We work. I mean <laughs> – Family <laughs> or whatever the kids want to do on the weekend, or the wife. I mean, this we got to find you guys some yeah. hobbies. Yeah, <laughs> we got to find something. So uh, yeah. Tell me about these kids, right? So we've got is it eight uh, girls now? The next gen eight uh, granddaughters for your yeah. mom and dad. Eight granddaughters. Eight. Yep. No boys in the mix. No boys. Wow. Yep. That's uh, awesome. Well, I've got two, and so I, I know a little bit about what's coming. I'll, I won't tell you that. I'll let yeah. that be a surprise. Well, Stores got two a little older, so he, yeah. he, he's going through it I, through the teenage years a little faster than I am. So I'm, I'm learning uh, how to navigate that through him. Uh, we got good kids, so yeah. it's been easy. Do we any do. of these girls have any interest whatsoever in concrete? Man, they got to develop their own path. and I mean, if, if they want it, they got to earn it. So. Yeah. 
I mean, that's to be determined. Yeah. Do you see any glimmer of hope there on uh, that they like the business, they want to know more about the business, or do they? I mean, they ask constantly ask questions. How did I mean, like the merger thing? How did we? How did we put that together? I yeah. mean, dinner conversations have turned into that at times, and I mean, I see potential, but. I mean, they got to – I want them to forward their own path, and if that brings them back home, then we'll gladly accept them, but they got to earn it. Yeah. So I imagine things right. will change once they hear Dad on the Give Us a Dirt podcast. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to say, Dad, yeah. tell me about this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They can't believe yeah. we, we came in to do this, oh, actually. Yeah. They yeah. had the Scott Gibbs approach. Yeah. So tell me, <laughs> what's next, guys? What's next? I mean, what's the next big thing? Well, we've got a few things that um, we're working on. Um, I don't think we have anything yeah. yet that we're ready to just to, to come out with, but I think there will be some exciting new things for us in, in the near future, I hope. Uh, Geographically, we got some gaps still to cover. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that would be the first focus. Mm-hmm. And then uh, who knows from there. Yeah. But well, we're mean, still growing. Planting. Oh, yeah. I mean, still, it's, we, we always say we're better with the project. So yeah, we just, just – I had never figured out how to not have a project. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, the the uh, the on-site business has really helped us with that. I mean, we have, we for the past, what, two years, we've had at least one, if not two, on-site plants going on throughout a year. Uh, and, I mean, I think at one point in time we had a job in Atlanta and a job in Rocky Mount. I was in Atlanta. Oh, yeah. Stuart was in Rocky Mount. Gary was running the office in, in Rock Hill. So, yeah. Man, we, we like challenges. So we'll see. I think that's exciting. And you guys, yeah. uh, it, I just want to tell you how much I admire both of you for what you've done. It's an amazing story. And I'm so glad that you decided to come in here and share it because it's a story that people need to hear. The whole purpose behind this thing is to share stories of successful people, people that have come up through this industry in hopes that it will engage the next generation of construction workers. And we need people to come in behind us. We need that next generation and to hear what you guys have been able to do with what you had. Yeah. That's inspirational, right? Oh, yeah. That's that's a great, great story. So, thanks for uh, having us. What is uh, uh, just your pitch to that group, to that to that next generation of construction workers? What would you tell them if they were seeking guidance from either of you as to why to get into this business? I mean, I think it's the same thing that goes back to my granddad. I mean, it just takes hard work. You got to. I mean, the biggest challenge I see with the young people is that they. They don't want to do the, all the steps to get there. They want to just go from point A to Z. And yeah. I mean, that's, I mean. It's rewarding. I mean, just, yeah. but it takes time. I mean, it's not going to be handed to you. Yeah. So you got to check and, them off. Yeah. And you don't want it if it's handed to you. I'll yeah. tell you that. So, yeah. I mean, just hard work. Well, that's the one, that's what separates the, the great companies from the others is that they realize there is no easy button. Uh-uh. You can't go from A to Z. Like this is a process that you guys have been developing over seventy years, yeah. and it's evolved into this. And you know, people can't look back and say, "Oh my man, how do I become Stevenson Ware? How do I experience that kind of growth and have those kind of opportunities?" And you say, "Well, you got to treat people right. You got to do all that." I don't want to mess with that. I just want this part. Of it, yeah, right? Yeah. Well, you can't no. have one without the other. No, no. You just got to be be good at where you are right now, and it'll happen. And take a chance every once in a while, you know. Yeah. So, I mean, we, we didn't know at the end of the day if we were going to be successful or not. But, yeah, we'd take a shot. Take well, a chance. You guys have done that, and you've done it well. And I don't think you can play the underdog card anymore. I don't think <laughs> anyone is considering you the underdog after well, what you've done. Yeah. So, congratulations. Thank you guys so much for coming and talking to us today. Thanks for Thank us. you. Thank you for listening to this episode of Give Us the Dirt. Our podcast is powered by Hoopa Grading Company in Charlotte, North Carolina, and produced by Well Run Media and Marketing. Visit our website at giveusthedirtpodcast.com and subscribe to this podcast on Apple and Google so you never miss an episode.